Here are 10 easter eggs that you missed in WandaVision episode 2. Alright now WandaVision dropped on Friday and of course it was fantastic and we all loved it and there's so many different things in each episode that or easter eggs, references, etc. So I'm going to cover 10 that not everyone knows about and maybe not the most common ones. Of course, before I get into this, quick little spoiler warning, it will be covering things that happened in the episode. If you don't want them spoiled for you, then uh, don't watch it, I guess, but it's been out for like five days now, you should have watched it already. But don't say I didn't warn you. One more thing, a couple parts of the episode, I will have to put like a, like a little uh, logo over, the WandaVision logo. That's just so they don't get copyrighted, otherwise you guys won't be able to see this video. Apart from that, let's just jump right into the first Easter egg. Now the first one comes in the credits right here and I'll play a little clip for you, so pay attention. Now this intro sequence directly copies an old sitcom called Bewitched. In Bewitched, the show is based around a witch fitting into suburban life, trying to hide her powers from everyone else and not get caught. Obviously, that's pretty much exactly what's going on in WandaVision so far. Uh, it's a literal witch trying to fit into a normal American life without giving away anything to her neighbors around her. Also in the credits, if you pause at this frame right here, you can see three posters on the wall. Now the first one here, now the first one here says Wonder Oat. Now this is a direct reference to the Marvel character Wonder Man, who is heavily linked to Wanda and Vision in the comics. Hopefully we get to see Wonder Man in the future, um, as more easter eggs come out I will cover them. The second poster is an advert here for Bova Milk. Now this is a really cool easter egg and it's very very strange so bear with me. In the comics, Bova is a cow midwife who actually delivered Wanda when she was being born. Wanda and Quicksilver. It's like a space cow nurse and it's very strange. But yeah, that's just a little shout out to, to the guy Bova. And third poster here is for Auntie A's and that's another shout out to Agatha Harkness, the witch. But I covered that in episode one, so I won't get into that too much. However, this little cat somewhere on the screen, this little cat is her cat. Her cat is also called Ebony. Next one here, we have the house number as Wanda leaves the house. Now, as you can see, and I'll pop it up bigger for you, the house number is 2800. In the comics, Earth 2800 is an Earth in which Wanda, Vision, and Quicksilver, Quicksilver, created the new Avengers on Earth. Now, it's just a little subtle shout out, but I also could maybe be hinting that Quicksilver could in fact be in the show at some point. Hopefully, please, 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 please. I want Quicksilver back so bad. Next one up here, and uh, this was actually a little bit more commonly known. A lot of people have noticed this already. We have the cabinet in which they're doing magic. And quite clearly, the, the design on the cabinet is the Mind Stone, which represents the Mind Stone in Vision's head, or just any Infinity Stone in general. As the cabinet, its main purpose is a disappearing cabinet, same way that the stones can make things disappear. Now, obviously, one of the biggest parts of the episode was this helicopter here. Now, there's a few interesting things about this helicopter. First of all, it has the sword logo, which obviously means it came from the outside world and it's in colour, which is a direct giveaway. Now, I've got a little theory about this. I just think that the helicopter flew too close to Wanda's reality and it's kind of been sucked in or it's broken by accident and subconsciously she's turned it into a toy because she doesn't want anything from the outside world penetrating her perfect reality. I don't know if it means anything as well, but notice how the colours are, one, the colours of Mephisto, which I will cover later on as well, I will get into Mephisto in a second, the Marvel Devil, or two, the colours of Iron Man. I, I don't know if that means anything, but it's just a little observation that I made while watching the episode. Now, on to Gerald... Geraldine, Wanda's friend here who lives in the neighbourhood. Now notice that when she gets asked her name, she doesn't really know what her name is. She's a bit unsure. I actually don't know what I'm doing here. I'm, uh, Geraldine. Now that's interesting because, you know, why would you stutter when you asked your name? Unless it wasn't your name. Now this character has been confirmed by Kevin Feige, the president of Marvel, that it is in fact Monica Rambeau, which is Captain Marvel friend's daughter all grown up. Now this is interesting because one, she came from the outside world. Two, she's most likely a sword agent. And three, she's actually a hero in the comics. Now you might be wondering like, why did, why is she there? How did she get here? What part did she play? No one knows yet. However, I do think that she may, this is a theory and it's not confirmed at all. She may have came in the helicopter. 
Now notice she wasn't in the first episode at all, this helicopter appears out of nowhere and magically Monica Rambeau shows up. I don't know how that ties in or fits or why she's there, maybe it's to monitor Wanda, but I guess we'll find out. Another little theory I have is look at the brooch on Monica Rambeau's t-shirt. Maybe Doctor Strange opened a portal for her as quite clearly that brooch is a Doctor Strange portal, a sling ring portal. This would actually make quite a lot of sense considering Wanda Vision leads straight into Doctor Strange 2 in the Multiverse of Madness where he may be mentoring. Also, a Doctor Strange cameo in this show would be perfect. Now just like last episode, this episode had a commercial in the middle and this commercial was for the Strucker watch or the Hydra watch as obviously it's got the Hydra logo on it right there. Now this is interesting because it shows Strucker right in the middle of the episode just like he was the center point in Wanda's life he is in fact the scientist that tested on her to give her superpowers in the first place the twins sooner or later they will meet the twins it's not a world of spies anymore not even a world of heroes this is the age of miracles doctor now, I know everyone probably noticed that already, but something you might not have picked up on is that the watch in general is a theme of the episode. The theme of Wanda and Vision's relationship is time. Each episode progresses a whole decade, which would imply that they're running out of time when they hit present day, they've run out of time together. And it's actually been a center point in the relationship throughout all the movies. It's time. We are out of time. That they constantly don't have enough time together. It's just a little thing, but I picked up on that and thought I would share it with everyone. Now, the big thing at the end here, the big thing that will probably be very confusing, but I also want to talk about it. Now, as you see at the end of the episode, Wanda gets pregnant. Now, obviously, she can't get pregnant from Vision. He is an AI robot. That's, I'm not giving the talk to all these kids, but that's not how it works. In the comics, she actually makes herself pregnant by altering reality. And she does this with the help of Agatha Harkness, the witch. Now you may have noticed, or you may not have, but I certainly did notice that a massive point of this episode, she's basically getting like subconsciously tricked into having children. Here's a couple clips just to prove it right now. School admissions. Well, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Those little boys and girls are counting on us. All of this is for the children. For the children. For the children. <laughs> Westview Elementary for the children. Children. So this talent show especially has been for the kids, as you saw there. However, you never actually see one child in the whole episode. It's just a subconscious thing to trick Wanda into having children or to put kids the idea in her head. Why? Why would the show or the character would be wanting Wanda to have children? Now I've got a theory about this, many other people do, it's not just my theory, pretty much most people who are into the comics have picked up on this. Wanda's kids in the comics are actually shards of the soul of Mephisto. Now bear with me, it's quite complicated. Mephisto is the Marvel devil. There are a few things that hint to him being the major villain for WandaVision, like this. The devil's in the details, Bev. That's not the only place he is. He basically gets name dropped and then Agnes, who's a sketchy character involved in this stuff, just pretty much confirms it for all the viewers here. And another thing, devils are normally known as having sidekicks or like slaves, servants, messengers, and in the show, Agnes says this line. Stick him up. Oh, don't shoot, I'm just a messenger. <laughs> pew, pew. Now we all know Marvel Comics, they pretty much don't do anything not on purpose, so I'm pretty sure this is meant to be said, and it's meant to get us wondering, or to have us put the clues together to figure out this. Also another thing, I do not think the beekeeper at the end is Mephisto. I think it could be something completely unrelated that we don't know yet, but there are a lot of theories. However, it does show someone crawling from hell, or it could symbolize someone crawling from the underworld, which is a little bit interesting and something to remember. Okay, thanks for watching, as always. Um, let me know if there's any of these that you didn't know and any that you picked up on yourself. Also, let me know in the comments any that I missed, because I know that I've missed some, everyone will miss some. You can't pick up on all this stuff, Marvel or just going ham with the Easter eggs. But yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you're enjoying the, the content that I'm putting out recently. I'm putting a lot of effort into my videos and trying to post as much as I can and all the new stuff coming out. Over the next few days, I've got Spider-Man videos coming out. Um, I've got weekly roundups coming out of all the new news that we're getting. And on Friday, of course, I will have my reaction and review to the new episode.
If you want to talk about superheroes, then click the link in the description, join my Discord, and come and talk with me and over 200 people on my server who are active all the time. We love talking about this stuff, and it's pretty fun. But yeah, apart from that, thanks for watching. I love you 3000. Take it easy.